Good morning, Zwingli. And all those others who may be watching us this morning, we're going to gradually get into our opening here so that if you're just getting your technology worked out, as sometimes we're just getting our technology worked out, uh, you have an opportunity to pull up the link uh, to provide you with the bulletin so you'll know the readings and the hymns for today. Uh, so I, I hope um, if you're not finding us on YouTube, you're finding us on Facebook. And of course, if you're not finding us, then you're not even hearing me say this. We'll get these wrinkles worked out. It's just a matter of time. Um, there are a few uh, prayer concerns that I want to uh, lift up. Uh, we can uh, be in prayer for Butch and his parents and all that he has going on. We're thankful that he is back in Pennsylvania and uh, will be rejoining us for worship next week. He cannot express enough his deep appreciation for all the prayers, the, the notes, the texts, the emails, uh, all the ways that he is feeling uh, your support. And uh, he really appreciates that. We are all incredibly grateful for the work of our tech team and our elders and our uh, Stephen ministers doing all that we can to stay connected and find more ways of um, feeling that we are continuing to do church for each and every one of you. So please be in touch with us. Let us know how we're doing, what else we can do, what your prayer concerns are. In fact, you may be able to send comments this morning. And if you have prayer concerns to add, I can't guarantee you that we'll have them by the time I'm doing the prayer, but we'll give it a try. And if we don't have them to include right now this morning, they will be included in um, our prayers throughout the week and in the prayers that will be lifted up at the, at the Lenten prayer circle on Wednesday and um, included in, in whatever ways we can. The requests that I have uh, gotten, um, many of you have expressed your appreciation and concern for all of those who are in healthcare, uh, first responders, those who are undergoing uh, chemo treatments and um, needing other medical procedures which put them in the hospital and in places where we're concerned that uh, those, those germs are out there. So we certainly lift up all of those. Uh, in our prayers and express our deep appreciation to all the people that are keeping everything running um, from the from the cooks at the fast food places um, um, to the doctors and and nurses and all the healthcare professionals people involved in keeping all of this happening. Um, we know that Michael Kraft is heading into uh, an important week. He'll be learning more tomorrow about their next steps and hopefully heading into Jefferson on Wednesday to get started on his next steps in his um, procedure. So I hope that we're learning of some other concerns along the way. Um, let's take a moment now to prepare for worship. rise in body or spirit for our call to worship. The prophet asks, can our soul weary bones live again? Oh God, you know. We ask, can we dance again after mourning, loss, and grief? Oh God, you know. The gift is sure and unmistakable. God's breath poured out as new life for weary souls. Let us celebrate the gift of God's new life and come to worship God in laughter and dancing. 
Please join in our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. Gracious God, you have invited and welcomed us to this place of worship. When we come together, we sense that there is nothing in life that can substitute for a vital relationship with you. Yet we are only dimly aware of who you are. All the mysteries of the universe are in your hands, yet you have made yourself known among the people of this earth. We catch glimpses of your work among us and are amazed. We want to meet you again today, as for the first time. Touch us, remake us, help us to stand firm in the faith. Amen. And as always, we have that need and appreciate the opportunity to reflect on life and recognize those things of which we need to be more aware. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. O oh God, we like to think we have nothing to confess. If our thoughts are pure, our actions kind, and our thanks genuine, have we not lived up to your standards? Yet you call us to put you first in all things, and we have not done that. You call us to be peacemakers, but we do little more than try to avoid conflict. You call us to a passionate faith, and compassionate sacrifice, and both are difficult for us. Feed us, God, with food that endures for eternal life, and answer our thirst with life-giving water. Do not worry. The God of peace will be with you, guarding your hearts and minds. Let your thoughts center on all that is true, honorable, just, pure, and commendable. Keep on doing the things you have learned. God's transforming spirit dwells with those who seek to be faithful. To be faithful. of many people or all alone, we are all in the presence of the peace that only Christ can bring. And so I encourage you to take a moment, and I'll give you a little more time today, to actually safely, with those around you, 
uh, share praise peace. children to come forward. So I've learned that usually the children are busy doing other things. So here's a moment. Children, children, are you listening? Are you out there? Come gather, watch for a moment. Kira was watching last week. Hi, Kira, if you're watching again this week. It's so much fun to see you. I bet, I bet you're smiling, that big smile of yours. I meant to bring my little Jesus with me. It was so much fun having, having a little Jesus time here, and I'm sorry. He's in my office, but I will try to remember to have Jesus with me the next time when we do a children's message. The first week that we did this, uh, Pastor Butch reminded you about washing your hands and encouraged you to sing Jesus Loves Me while you do that. And last week, remember, well, maybe you didn't hear, but we talked about laughter and joy and the ways that you can be such a part of doing that. If you, um, I was going to say, if you missed it last week, I'll laugh again, but you know, I probably don't need to do that. Uh, but give it a try. Just intentionally laugh and see how long it takes to start laughing with you. Um, so this week, uh, we're going to be spending some time at 1030 on a Zoom gathering with our children. And um, you all should have received an invitation. If you have not, uh, find some way to message the church and we'll get an invitation sent out to you uh, to be part of a Zoom session of Sunday School. And we're going to talk more, uh, besides just catching up with each other, we have a whole list of folks in our church that could benefit so much from receiving cards and reminders that they're being thought about. So I, um, encourage you to ask your parents to look for that sign up genius and find the names and addresses of people and, um, and get to work and make some colorful, loving messages that you can send to other members of our church that need to also be reminded, just like we all do, that uh, we are still one and um, there's a lot of love there for us to share. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all the ways that we have the opportunity to speak to our people, to continue to be a community of faith. We're thankful for all the children and pray your blessing on them as they adapt to something that uh, may be difficult for them to understand. And I'm sure they're starting to get a bit Ramy with uh, the limitations. Give us all patience. Be with them in particular. We pray that all of our children will continue to know your love, your presence each and every day, and that they will always know the love of this congregation poured out for them. In Christ's name, amen.
taken from the Old Testament this morning is from Joshua 1, chapter 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And our epistle lesson this morning is from Philippians 4, chapter, uh, verses 4 through 9. I'm reading from the New Inter International Version. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. May God bless the reading of this holy word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Over the years, I've had the privilege of standing in front of the congregation to share various thoughts and words. Those opportunities have included Wednesday evening Lenten services, Sunday worship, words of celebration at pastor anniversary, and even words of remembrance at a funeral service. All those occasions have involved a sanctuary at least half filled with people and friendly faces. This morning, I'm standing in front of an almost empty sanctuary, except for six friendly faces. And honestly, it is one of the stranger things that I have experienced in the church. Due to the pandemic, we find ourselves in far different places today as compared to when we would be gathering here for worship. There is also a feeling deep inside that there are others with us even though they aren't right here. Maybe you are worshiping while enjoying breakfast with your family or those that I know that are sitting in their comfortable recliners in their living room. Or maybe you're relaxing on the couch if your dog gives you enough room to sit there. I did promise my dog that I would get a dog in there this morning. So many things are out of kilter these days with so much uncertainty, and we are away from the holy ground that is our church home. What we are not away from is the presence of God, and I hope that you feel God's presence no matter where you are this morning. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and if I had followed the common lectionary, you would have heard 45 verses from John. The pastors assured me that it was okay to be a little rebellious and go on a different course from the lectionary. I've chosen several of my favorite scriptures that always speak to me about God's presence. Joshua 1.9 is printed on a small piece of paper on the bulletin board in my office that unfortunately I've not occupied very much over the last two weeks. Psalm 130, out of the depths I cry to the Lord. My whole being waits for the Lord and in his word I put my hope. I could have also selected Psalm 46, my mother's favorite psalm. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present ever help in trouble. And the, New Test and the last New Testament scripture from Philippians 4, chapters 4 through 9. A wonderful friend emailed me information earlier this week about Philippians 4, and it spoke to me, as Paul's words often do. So this is Paul's letter to the people at Philippi, which is in northern Greece, and was the first church that Paul, who was a missionary and a theologian, started in Europe. Paul's letter to the faithful at Philippi is all of four chapters. 
Paul wrote this letter while he was under house arrest, while waiting for his case to be heard by the emperor of Rome. There was a good chance that he could be sentenced to death. It is hard to imagine joy and rejoicing in those circumstances. But as early as chapter 1, verse 3, Paul is talking about constantly praying with joy in his prayers for those in Philippi. They had heard about his imprisonment, and Paul wanted to reassure them of his joy, in spite of the circumstances that he was encountering. He also knew that the church had its struggles, and Paul's letter is written as encouragement to the faithful, instead of just trying to solve their problems. Paul loved this church, and the words joy and rejoice are written 16 times in the four chapters of Paul. The selected verses for this morning are labeled final exhortations in the Bible that I used, or more simply, encouragement and advice. Most of his advice centers around the church at Philippi having a good attitude. Throughout the entire letter, Paul gives specific advice about how to maintain an attitude that is pleasing to God. While preparing this meditation, I consulted a lot of resources and I heard a story about a company executive who was traveling on a one-day trip to another city where he would participate in important meetings and then fly home at the end of the day. Well, nothing was going right for Harry that day. His flight was delayed, the cab driver took him to the wrong building, and the elevator stopped on every floor. By the time he arrived at the meeting, he was angry, annoyed, and frustrated. It took all his strength to keep his emotions in check and remain calm. After about 30 minutes of the meeting, he reached a breaking point and proceeded to reprimand a new employee on the team for something that he perceived she had done wrong. While he felt bad for his outburst, he assured himself that she would get over it. After the meeting ended, he faced the same house airport and as the taxi driver was driving along, a car pulled out in front of him and the taxi came to a screeching stop. The driver of the offending car turned around and cursed at the uh, driver of the taxi and flipped various hand signals to the cab driver. The cab driver reacted very calmly and simply waved to the driver and allowed him to keep pulling out. Now Harry, who was already having a bad day, was livid and started yelling at the cab driver for being so calm and for not being more hostile to the other driver. The cab driver looked calmly in his rear view, rear view mirror and told Harry, all that matters is how you choose to react. All that matters is how you choose to react. Profound words, words for thought, and words that reflect what Paul is writing about with regard to attitudes as advice and encouragement to his church. Attitudes, how we choose to react. What an amazing attitude Paul is showing Christians even in today's world. He could have taken the attitude of being miserable as he was there under house arrest, possibly in chains and definitely unable to freely come and go. In a small way, we could compare that to this unprecedented time as we are quarantined to our homes or severely limited in where, we're, where we can go. How have we done with this time of quarantine? What is your attitude? Could we use the words joy and rejoicing? As we, as we face uncertainty of jobs, income, health, separation from loved ones, and the list goes on. How is there joy and rejoicing when we read an email from Keystone Opportunity Center as they write about being in emergency response mode to help as many of their clients as possible? The book of Philippians is filled with words from Paul as he counsels his saints at Philippi to have a good attitude for a few minutes, let's take a look at the different attitudes in Paul's words. Attitudes that were very well pleasing to God. Now sometimes when I write, I use bullet points as it helps me to keep my thoughts clearer and to the point instead of getting lost in a paragraph. It would be my five bullet points that I'd like to share with you from Paul's letter. The first one is joy. We need to have an attitude of joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Sounds like a really large challenge these days. We've had our ups and downs, difficulties and problems at life that do not make for joyous moments. So how do we rejoice? We can rejoice always in the Lord. No, where, no matter what happens to us, as Christians, we can rejoice in our hope. This is not to deny the harsh realities of life. 
It is to know that whatever happens, we are loved by God, and great is our reward in heaven. Years ago, when my mother's cancer returned, she said to her pastor that no, no matter what happened, everything would be all right. Whether she lived or whether she died, there was joy that God was with her and that she would someday be with God. There were joyful moments during those times, one of them being that she lived long enough to know all of her grandchildren. And there were difficult moments too. But in the end, she knew that she would be okay because God was with her. Rejoice in the Lord always. Gentleness. A definition that I read this week about gentleness comes from Max Licato's book, Anxious for Nothing, Finding Calm in a Chaotic World. He defined gentleness as a temperament that is seasoned and mature, an attitude fitting to the occasion, a steadiness and even-handedness. The opposite of this would be panic and evident to all. When the boat is sinking, there are those who will panic and there are those who will remain contagiously calm. Lakato terms this gentleness as contagiously calm and reminds others that God is in control. I like those two words together, contagiously calm. As the calmer we are, the more likely that someone may follow that lead. Calmly taking our concerns to God, who will never react with impatience or condemnation, only gentleness. The third point would be prayer. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be anxious for nothing. I don't know about you, but that could be quite a challenge these days. Once again, back to Lacaldo's book, when he talks about choosing prayer over despair and to be thankful. The power of prayer is in the heart of the one who is praying. Cast all of your anxiety on God because he cares for you. Gratitude leads us from wondering what our lives could become if only we had this or that. It leads us to a place where we recognize all the blessings in our life. What blessings can you name that God has given you? Choose to be thankful in all circumstances. Thanksgiving, it's not just a holiday in November, but it's an attitude of the heart, a heart full of thanksgiving and gratitude. Peace. We need to have an attitude of peace. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Paul is talking about a peace from God from which we can never be separated. How do we keep from being consumed by anxiety and worry? We pray for the peace of God that controls our hearts and minds. A peace that is beyond our understanding and our assurance that God is with us in all times and places. We've never been promised a life without trials and tribulations, but we have been promised that God will be with us every step of the way. When we pass through the waters, God will be with you. In meditation, in verse eight, followers that they need to be in an attitude of meditation. Spend time speaking about Spend time thinking about things that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. Turn off the electronics, leave the phone somewhere away from you, and find time to be in the presence of God. Maybe take time to read the epistle of, the, of Philippians. It won't take long, it's four pages and 104 verses. Replace anxious thoughts with grateful thoughts. Remember that the more you look to God, the more the problem is reduced to its proper size. The five attitudes, joy, gentleness, prayer, peace, and meditation. As we go forth today, may we exhibit attitudes that are well-pleasing to God. May we remember that all that matters is how we choose to react. Do God's will in all places. And may we indeed know the presence of God and the peace of God 
which transcends all understanding. Amen. Gracious and loving God, thank you. Help us rejoice. Help us now, especially, to tap into that realization that in the midst of many things being difficult, there is cause for joy because you are always there. You've, you've got our backs, always. We are so thankful for our congregation, for the ways that we are able to still feel connected, for all the people that are making efforts here and, and throughout the world that are doing things to, to keep us um, connected with technology and aware of each other. Uh, the news can be overwhelming, but we are free to receive news. We need to be reminded that even our isolation is a privilege. If we have a home to be isolated in, that's a privilege. If we have food on our tables, not all do. Keep us aware, Lord, of so many 
who do not have even the ways that we have to stay isolated and safe. There are so many to pray for, health care providers, first responders, so many people that are out there working each and every day to keep things happening for the rest of us. Continue to keep us mindful of our responsibility to do the things we need to do to protect, not, not just protect ourselves, but to protect everyone around us, everyone out there. We did bring some specific requests to our prayers today. We ask that you be with Michael and all that he is dealing with right now. We ask that you be with all of those who are struggling with um, treatments and whose immune systems are compromised. We know there are many for whom this is a huge threat, and we pray your protection and blessing. We pray for Butch, Pastor Butch and his family still, as he works diligently at uh, getting things worked out and settled for his parents. We pray for others who, in this time of isolation, are having to do many things um, through long distance to make sure that their loved ones are safe and being cared for. We know this is a difficult time for many. We pray for those people who have been using our prayer bench and in particular lift up um, the daddy of a child who left a prayer concern because his daddy's back is hurting. We ask that you be with all of those who are using our bench and lifting up prayers, needing that place to feel connected. We're thankful that even in the midst of all of this, there are still babies being born and birthdays being celebrated. There are college acceptance letters being received and their anniversaries being uh, recognized. Keep us mindful of all of the ways that people are finding joy and sharing joy. We're so thankful for the games of appreciation that happen each evening at 7 p.m. in cities all over the world, expressing appreciation for all who are giving so much. While we might not be in uh, the kind of neighborhood that's going to go to our doorsteps and uh, hammer and yell and clap, keep us mindful anyway of taking time each day in appreciation. Keep us ever mindful that we choose our attitude, that we choose the ways we face this, act, this event that's going on. Help us in our choices. Keep us joyful and thankful and mindful of your presence. May we all be aware of your peace within us and the opportunity we have to share that peace with those around us. Bless us in all of the ways that we can continue to share your love and do your will. We ask in Christ's name, praying together the words Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now have uh, a stewardship moment from Rick Rogers, the chair of our stewardship committee. Well, good morning, everyone. 
Today's stewardship movement was written and put together by Tara Koonsman. She have been social distancing up in the Poconos, so she was unable to be here to read it. So I'm uh, a rather poor stand-in for her. But here's her message. Whatever your talent may be, guess what? God is behind it. But he doesn't bless us with talent so we can get noticed or earn lots of cash. However, that can be a result of it, but it's much bigger than that. God wants us to honor him with those gifts. He wants us to be good and faithful servants with our talents. How? Two ways, blessing others and building his kingdom. Maybe there's a ministry here at Swingley that uses your talent to help others. If you love working on cars, volunteer to repair a single mom's car for free. Or if you paint, hold an art class for nursing home residents. It does not matter if you have been given great talent, abilities, and wealth, or very little. What matters to God is what we do with it, big or small. I know you have all heard the saying, you can't take it with you. Well, I was thinking of this the other day, and I came across this story. There was a rich man who was quite distressed over the prospect of not being able to take his riches with him when he died. So before he died, he loaded his briefcase with two gold bars from his private vault and left instructions to have the case locked with key, handcuffed to his wrist, and placed into his, with the key placed into his grave clothes. His family carried out his orders correctly to the letter. When he appeared at the pearly gates, he had the briefcase with him, and St. Peter asked, so what do you have in the suitcase? Well, very proudly, the man unlocked the case and opened it and displayed his two gold bars. St. Peter said, isn't that special? You brought pavement. Well, the spirit of the Christian life is following and worshiping God, helping others, and putting our talent, ability, and wealth to good use. Our gifts to God should be out of gratitude for what he has done for us. And he is the most generous person who has ever lived. So for where, where your treasure is, there will also where your heart will be. So this stewardship moment couldn't come at a better time in this current situation. Um, I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a message that's been out in monthly mailings, an email, and um, in the bulletin today. And that is giving and giving to the church now. Um, we are grateful for all those who have been giving through electronically, uh, electronic giving every, every month or week or however you have it done. But the uh, regular giving has fallen off drastically in the past couple of weeks. So those who don't give electronically can still do so. You can download the form from the church's website. There's instructions in the monthly mailing uh, and print it out and fill it in, mail it into the office and get that set up. And for those who can't print, uh, please call the office tomorrow and the, the, um, Lisa will send out the uh, form to you for you to complete it. Also, if you'd like, there's a donate button on the church's website that works through our PayPal account. <clears throat> we understand that this current situation is certainly impacting people in many ways, including financially, and some may need to decrease their giving. And we certainly understand that. Uh, if if those, are, uh, those folks need to change their electronic giving amount, you can use that same form I just mentioned and fill it in and change your giving amount. Um, there may be others out there that who, who can temporarily give more to help make up for the difference. You can also change your giving amount through that form. Uh, or simply mail in a check in your offering envelope to the church. And that is certainly an option for everybody. You can just take your offering envelope, mail it in, and it will be uh, deposited weekly uh, through, through, our, uh, through our office. Certainly, there are other op opportunities for stewardship, especially for our time and talent. You've seen messages about calling uh, volunteers to call shut-ins and, and those who may need some help. You see messages about the dire straits of Keystone Opportunity Center. Um, there, there are many, many other opportunities out there, even though you are stuck at home, to help others. So with that, may God bless you during this difficult time and may God also bless others through you.
Thank you. Maybe we use this opportunity to give you a moment to pull out your checkbook, to think about where your um, giving opportunities are. I'm going to add my, my extra beyond the electronic giving. Um, you know that we need it. And um, I'm going to have just a few measures of offertory, and then I'm going to offer a prayer for the giving that um, I'm sure you'll be doing. blessing on all that has been and will be given. We pray that all that we are able to give in time, talent, or treasure, particularly at this time, will be especially blessed to benefit those who need it most, to help us continue to reach out as the church, to those around us who need to be assured more than ever of your steadfast love and faithfulness. Bless all that we give in all the ways that we give it, that it might be used to your glory in Christ's name. Amen. We have an opportunity for announcements. I have a few of them. Um, First of all, I apologize for not right up front uh, welcoming Sue Lock to our pulpit this morning. I can't tell you how much I appreciate her stepping up this week and uh, bringing the message to us. And thank you. It was a great message. Um, there will be, uh, we tried it last week. We're getting better at this. We're getting our Zoom perfected. So this Wednesday at noon, we will do a Zoom prayer circle. Um, if you would like the invitation sent to you, uh, let us know. If you have prayer concerns you would like us to be paying attention to during that time, let us know. At 10.30 today, there will be a children's Sunday school Zoom gathering. Can't wait to see what that's going to be like. <laughs> um, and this evening, we are going to do a fellowship with our young families. Uh, again, by Zoom, I have a great game that we're going to enjoy playing. So we hope um, all of our young family folks will be tuning in and getting into our Zoom meeting. That invitation has been sent out. If by chance you do not get one and you want one, um, my email is in all kinds of listings. Send me an email and we'll make sure that that invitation gets sent to you. With Palm Sunday at Easter Egg Hunt coming up uh, on the weekend, uh, we are, are doing a very as safe as possible, hands-off kind of thing. Uh, the palms work, and uh, so they're, they're coming anyway. So we will put them out at the door, um, spread out enough that you hopefully can pick up only what you want without touching any others. We have been preparing the eggs for the Easter egg hunt, they are going into bags. There will be crafts in bags that will all be sitting all week untouched by human hands uh, so that any germs have plenty of time to, to die and be gone. Not that we expect they're in because we've been very careful with washing our hands. It will be a drive through pickup. Um, they will be out on the table. You can come uh, at 10 and get a bag per child of eggs and crafts and go home and have a wonderful Easter egg hunt uh, wherever, whenever uh, you choose to have it. Just trying to find more ways to continue to be the church and keep us all connected. Um, I think those are the only announcements that I needed to make this morning. Uh, continue to be in touch with us, let us know 
how this is going and what else we can do each week. We tweak it a little bit more. So we appreciate your feedback and um, look forward to worshiping with you again next week. I believe being all of the announcements we need, um, rise if you would like. For our closing hymn, It Is Well. cancer when she was 17 years old and now she's in her 30s and she talked about um, how she's had to be very aware of her immune system for so many years and at the very end of the article she said Never take any moment or any day for granted for granted it just seemed like appropriate words for where we are these days so I remind you of that as we go into this day go forth into the world in peace be of good courage, hold, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, 
support the weak, help the afflicted, and honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you do, may the light of God surround you, may the love of God enfold you, the power of God protect you, and the peace of God sustain you now and always. Amen.